Next up, we've got cryptocurrency. Can the blockchain transform finance? With Patrick Furlati, who's with Projects for Change and Global Mana. Projects for Good, sorry. Well, anyways, I'd like to actually um, give a background. I, I'm the founder of the Global Mana Foundation, and the reason I started a, a nonprofit because I was surfing in front of a nuclear power plant, and then uh, the nuclear power plant was really old, Nixon era, and I knew that there was something weird with this massive power generation system. And you know, years later, they decommissioned it, and it was leaking, and I felt like really betrayed by society because they, you know, had set up these you know centralized power plants that had you know these massive power cables that went all over America, and it was just kind of the normal thing to do is to set up these massive power generation stations. And, and I, I looked into it, and I felt that um, it's actually, the government saw centralized power grids as national security. And so uh, looking at technology and renewable energy emerging, um, it seemed obvious that there was a battle between commercialized centralized power grids and, and micro grids. So um, the opportunity for blockchain to actually uh, transfer information, not only just currencies, but also electricity um, and smart contracts, which, which is an automated contract, um, it, it kind of opened a new door for a brand new industry uh, called solar sharing. And so I'm here with Nick, and I want to introduce Nick because the opportunity for communities to actually sell uh, um, solar with these uh, concepts called smart contracts and building um, communities that are off the grid so that we could take down these massive power cables and these uh, centralized power stations and build communities that you know, can actually be, um, where, where homes can actually sell, buy and sell power in a, in a community. So anyways, go ahead, Nick. Oh, okay, I'll give a little intro, um, et cetera. Uh, before I start, I want to thank our, our previous speaker. I'd, I'd like to admit that I'm trained as a cultural anthropologist, so. I feel safe to say that. Uh, hopefully get culture. Um, a, a little background on myself. I am a um, hedge fund finance um, type guy, but also a um, deep technologist who's a chief analyst for uh, something equivalent of the MIT Media Lab um, in Europe. Um, don't worry. I'm not going to try to explain blockchain and crypto stuff. We won't get techy. Um, but I uh, would like to explain um, a few things. Um, one, some of you in your um, little grab bags, and I think maybe only half of you, so ask your neighbor if they got it, have something called SolarCoin. There's a little brochure in there about that. I'll briefly explain that. SolarCoin is a renewable energy reward, um, which is given out to anyone who produces one megawatt hour of energy. It's up there on the board. The economy right now is very, very small. Um, it's about a $10 million reward. The potential reward that can be claimed over the next 40 years um, is right now uh, worth about $20 billion. It's traded. Um, globally, so it's, it's a little bit like um, Bitcoin based on the same technology, but an extremely low carbon footprint. So Bitcoin is on course to consume about a billion dollars worth of energy this year. Um, when we scale SolarCoin up to the same scale, seven million users, it would consume about $100,000 worth of energy. Um, it's a small thing right now, you won't hear about it, but I can say that uh, a monitoring company in the US that represents about 10% of US solar energy installations is interested in distributing this, so um, hopefully we're coming to a neighborhood near you soon. The idea is that this currency um, trades 24-7, and um, the second uh, indication, LICA, the other job I have as an exchange, will be issuing a debit card based on this solar coin. So uh, what that means is if you produce solar energy, you can get one of these things, right now worth about 20 cents, 23 cents. And in a year, um, as I mentioned, um, uh, to a friend um, two weeks ago, I was in, um, at the UNFCCC, who oversees the uh, United Nations the climate change efforts. I hope to be able to spend my solar coin in their coffee shop. Um, the same way that when you travel uh, abroad, let's say you're in Europe and you um, have, you're spending euros linked to a dollar account, um, Lika will be offering a debit card um, based on this, this currency and others. So, interesting product. Um, Lika will be coming to the US um, as a regulated entity in Q3, Q4. So, that's just a little hint. Now I'm going to go to Patrick's point on grids. I just want to explain <laughs> some of the, uh, the aspects here. Um, there's a fascinating revolution going on with energy, and it's going to be massive. And it, and it is um, this cheap, um, there are three things, I think, three factors that are going to drive this. Um, cheap solar, which you all know, Swanson's Law, it's getting cheaper every year. Um, 
the $7 a watt install in 2007 is now 50 cents a watt. So you can imagine what would happen to the oil industry or the coal industry if all of a sudden the price of a barrel of oil went from, from $50 to five and was going to keep heading down, right? It's a technological change, so it's, it's directionally that way. The, there are three things that are gonna change the industry, industry, energy industry massively. Cheap solar is easy, everybody gets it. Cheap storage is the second one. Um, there will be about 230 gigawatt hours of storage shipped um, for mobile electronic or electric vehicles in the next five to seven years. Um, what a lot of people don't know is those batteries, um, once they're done with their kind of deep charge cycle, get repo repurposed into things for the wall. And the third thing is um, blockchain. And ignore all the complicated stuff, just think of a blockchain as just a very interesting type of database that allows lots of people to collaborate in a trusted way in a very open environment. New social structures, new forms of market, new things emerge because all of a sudden people can trust each other where they couldn't beforehand. So small groups that may not have been able to organize for trust or do it informally can do that. They could do that to um, fund power, trade energy, create new trade networks, etc. An example of this, um, I created last year a concept around a microgrid for the emerging world um, that used this database technology for um, emerging market in Bangladesh, where individuals could go into what are called the energy deserts of the world and put up a microgrid, um, build credit histories on top of their payment history, um, track the production of energy, and do some really interesting things. Um, that won an award at COP22 in Marrakesh. Um, we'll be attending uh, COP23 um, this year. And there are lots of amazing technologies. And in the US, you're gonna see the same thing. What's happening is the economics, fundamental economics, of storage and cheap solar driving significant shifts towards decentralized energy. The moment the average homeowner, average person wakes up and they say, I can power my house and my car for $40 a month. Why do I have to pay 150 or 200? That is as about local politics as you can get. It's the connection between the voter and their wallet. And that's a pretty tight connection and feedback loop. Um, that's gonna have some powerful implications. And one of the things that's gonna allow that is blockchain technology for trading energy and credits on small microgrids. And there are a couple of companies out there um, that are facilitating and enabling that. Um, and if anyone's interested, happy to give you um, introductions to those companies or elaborate on some of uh, the things that are going on here. Um, I do have to apologize. I'm um, leaving this afternoon um, to go and, and advise um, some people in the World Bank in Washington, D.C. later today on, and, or later tomorrow on um, energy and blockchain. But I just want to say that the blockchain technology is an incredibly fast moving force for democratization, distribu distribution of energy, and even um, politics and behavior. To give you an example, all of the blockchain assets um, at the beginning of this year were worth five or six billion dollars. They're now worth 110 billion dollars. So that size in the global context isn't super interesting. The rate of growth is phenomenal. Um, so two weeks ago, I was advising G20 on green policy. My message to them was small is the new big. It's gonna be the microgrids or the individual or the launch of thousands of currencies that people choose to participate in. So will people spend a solar energy currency or a local currency or other things? And these small changes in aggregate will manifest massive changes. And the rate that those things are, are coming is truly overwhelming. Um, that's about it. <laughs> that's a lot. Well, so anyways, in a nutshell, because I've been uh, kind of a, a block on the blockchain uh, train for a little while, um, what we see, the, the great opportunity is to create communities that are completely off the centralized power grid. There's a lot of people, they feel really guilty that you know, they leave lights on and actually the wire, if you follow the wire, it's just some you know, natural gas power plant that you know, came from liquid methane, which was injected into the earth and is spewing out of orphan wells and causing you know, horrible contaminants and air pollution that are causing cancer and you know, polluting drinking water. And then we have you know, this kind of government that you know, quote unquote natural gas, it's a natural carcinogenic fume, but I mean, it's natural, so it's okay. It's a natural kind of cancer, so don't worry. 
you know, so what can you do as a human being now? <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, when you realize that, you know, the centralized government and, and centralized everything has really caused so many problems and the expansion of population on the planet, how do we deal with um, the realities of the world where we all, are, we all know the realities of the world and how do we move forward? And the best way to do that is to create communities that, you know, come to terms with these problems and actually exchange solar. I mean, everybody's house should be a positive energy producing power plant that could actually sell energy to your neighbor. And so uh, with blockchain, it could be the backbone infrastructure on software platforms that would be so simple where if you wake up in the morning and you say that, hey, you know, I turned all my lights off and my AC was off and I just uh, sold my neighbor, you know, $24 worth of electricity because he had his refrigerator on all night. And I just made money selling the sun's energy to my friend. And then the next day, it might be the other way around. But uh, the other thing I want to talk about is how electricity actually works and how big centralized power plants are just the most ridiculous concept on the planet because 50% of electricity produced in centralized power grids is completely uh, wasted and birds are killed. And then there's so much land, the amount of real estate that is owned by governments uh, for power lines is just astronomical. You know, I would like to take down these massive power lines. It's the biggest problem I see. Uh, it, we've already ruined the um, migrations of birds and animals and wildlife because of power plants and pipelines and all this stuff. What I see the opportunity with the blockchain and software that can easily uh, monitor and track seamless uh, energy with credits and smart contracts, which are just automated. You, you know, you wake up in the morning, you can check your meter, and then you know, you're, you're, you built yourself into a community where you didn't have to follow the laws of, of the central power grid. So net metering has been, uh, you know, a very complicated uh, battle with energy and renewable energy. And, um, you know, the, the, the forces that be in America have really, you know, drawn the line on, on allowing people to create their own electricity. And I think that creating your own electricity should be a right that everyone on the planet should have. If you want to put solar panels in your house, I mean, they're going to come arrest you or something like that. I've heard some weird stories in some states, and it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Uh, so the, what, what humans really need to do is, is work together to, to build these communities where we can actually uh, escape the grasp of these, um, these central power grids that are struggling to survive, because they know they're doomed. They know that technology and the price of oil is going to collapse. And what they should do is they should invest into renewable energies, yeah. and it's ine it's inevitable, really. Yeah, we're actually in talks um, with some projects in some uh, Middle East governments um, that know they face a serious issue um, because the sensitivity of oil price um, relative to uh, just a slight shift in the demand, i.e. getting a few million vehicles off the road or off oil, is so significant that there will be um, large political implications um, with these shifts. The other uh, large implication needs to be acknowledged also is uh, stranded assets. So these utilities are going to face potentially trillions of dollars of stranded assets in terms of coal, natural gas contracts, etc. They will push back politically. Um, that'll happen in the next probably four to five years in a major way as the price curves shift down. Yeah, well, anyways, I, I like Sorry about that. The, the opportunity <laughs> is to give power back into just the regular human beings on the planet. And you know, if you want to create a, a power plant that's renewable energy and it's your house and you want to sell power plant, I think it's your right. And, and this is the, supposed to be the free market economy. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is something that I think that you know, f renewable energy should be lobbying, lobbying in Washington, D.C. more um, the rights to creating your own electricity. And, and it, it almost should be a constitutional right now. So anyways, uh, blockchain is, is the great opportunity it's the backbone infrastructure that will just be a seamless transaction. Um, you don't have to understand the complexities of these exchanges, but they're very secure and transparent and eliminates fraud. And it's, and it's, it's you know, something that the world can't deny is happening. Are there questions out there? We have a little bit of time. Uh, you, sir, in the back. Do you, are you aware of a model that could incorporate a utilities participation? Yeah, we're, we're actually, in the energy, blockchain energy space, there are probably half a dozen real players and then a lot more coming in. 
And a lot of the utilities are looking at this because they're realizing um, that the future is moving very, very fast and they need to move fast. So blockchain tech is a tech that moves in like, you know, literally one, two month product cycles, innovations all the time. Utilities live and breathe in 20 year CapEx cycles. And so it is the dinosaur on the meteorite, literally. So yes, major utilities, especially the German and the European ones are very, very advanced. RWE, for example, major player, Eon, Engine. Um, uh, Europe is very advanced in this space. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, lived there for years. Generation. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. For, um, 31st of May, we had a particularly sunny day, and obviously mm -hmm. the UK government's invested very heavily in solar power subsidies. So 40% of the entire power, electricity generation, was wind and solar power. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that's the first time in a developed nation that that proportion um, was developed. Coal was 1.4, just it, to put in proportion. It, it, it may be. Denmark may quibble, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave you your victory, <laughs> sir. Um, <laughs> and the reality is right now in, in the uh, world, just for a quick little global factoid, in 30 countries globally, um, solar is cheaper and renewables are cheaper than fossil fuels. And the tech curve is just pushing the number of countries faster. And the next revolution is going to be storage, which is going to increase the ability to add more renewables into a generating portfolio. So there's a massive, massive wave of, of shift. And there's Should, no shouldn't more be done to bring to um, the American public the advances being made in Europe and the fact that it's now economically viable, which isn't um, the message you're getting? I, I, I guess yes. I mean, I'm, I'm doing my part uh, <laughs> with, with the solar energy incentive. Um, even the hard economics, those messages will travel through. Um, it's, it's regulatory things that, that may be hindrances. We're all done. And we're all done. Thank we, you, guys. We won't go into blockchain. <laughs>